Live from London, this is BBC News. As scrutiny of Western powers arms exports to Israel intensifies, the World Central Kitchen charity calls for an independent investigation into the strikes that killed seven members of its team in Gaza. Lord Cameron rolls out Western boots on the ground in Ukraine. He tells the BBC allies need to step up or risk the war being lost. And a major medical trial begins to learn whether blood tests can spot the early signs of dementia. Hello, I'm Samantha Simmons. Welcome to BBC News Now. Three hours of fast-moving news, interviews and reaction. The British government is facing mounting pressure to suspend arms sales to Israel after seven aid workers were killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza this week. Aid groups working in Gaza have demanded that the Israeli army improve and adhere to security procedures aimed at keeping their workers safe. The non-governmental organisation that employed the aid workers, the World Central Kitchen, has released a statement calling on the governments of Australia, Canada, the US, Poland and the UK to join us in an investigation into the attacks. They added an independent investigation is the only way to determine the truth of what happened and to prevent future attacks on humanitarian aid workers. Shimon Friedman, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Blood tests for dementia will be offered at more than 50 memory clinics across the UK. A five-year trial will try to find out whether the tests can spot the early signs. The trials are being run by teams in Oxford and London with thousands of volunteers and the plan is to introduce screening for dementia in over 50s. Fergus Walsh reports. We put Wingfield Hayes there. Well, let's just show you the live shot in Taiwan where, as we said, there are still searches continuing uh, across the country with uh, several hundred people still believed to be trapped. Uh, there are, though, many getting their phone signals back in the mountainous regions. You can keep up to date with that story, of course, on the BBC News website. Do stay with us here on BBC News. I'll be back very shortly with plenty more on all of the day's top stories. Thanks for watching. This is BBC News, the headlines. As scrutiny of Western powers arms exports to Israel intensifies, the World Central Kitchen charity calls for an independent investigation into the strikes that killed seven members of its team in Gaza. Lord Cameron rules out Western boots on the ground in Ukraine. He tells the BBC allies need to step up or risk the war being lost. And a major medical trial begins to learn whether blood tests can spot the early signs of dementia. More now on one of our main stories this hour and a special ceremony has been held to mark the 75th anniversary of the NATO alliance. As the war in Ukraine continues, the alliance has agreed to start planning for a greater role in coordinating military aid to the country. Foreign ministers led by the alliance's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg met today to discuss how they can best support Ukraine in the future. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.
The installation of new security scanners in major British airports has been delayed by up to a year. It means that passengers will still need to remove liquids and laptops from hand luggage this summer and potentially for another 12 months. Our transport correspondent Katie Austin explains. Now, Buckingham Palace's famous centre room, where the royal family meets before appearances on the balcony, will open to the public for the first time. Visitors will be able to take guided tours of the royal residence's east wing, but they won't be able to stand on the balcony itself. After five years of improvements, the principal floor of the wing will be open in July. That's it for me. I'm Samantha Simmons. Thanks very much for watching. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Live from London, this is BBC News. The fallout from Israel's deadly strike on aid workers. There are calls for Western countries to suspend arms exports and for an independent investigation into the attack. Lord Cameron rules out Western boots on the ground in Ukraine. He tells the BBC allies need to step up or risk the war being lost. NATO countries bordering Russia urge their Western allies to reintroduce military conscription to deter Vladimir Putin. The race to rescue hundreds of people still missing in Taiwan after a powerful and deadly earthquake rocked the island. Hello, I'm Samantha Simmons. Welcome to BBC News Now. Three hours of fast-moving news, interviews and reaction. The British government is facing mounting pressure to suspend arms sales to Israel after seven aid workers were killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza this week. Aid groups working in Gaza have demanded that the Israeli military improve and adhere to security procedures aimed at keeping their workers safe. The non-governmental organisation that employed the aid workers, the World Central Kitchen, has released a statement calling on the government of Australia, Canada, the US, Poland and the UK to join us in an investigation into the attacks. They added an independent investigation is the only way to determine the truth of what happened and to prevent future attacks on humanitarian aid workers. Hugo, thank you. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Now, some NATO countries along Russia's border are calling on their Western allies, including the UK, to bring back military service as a deterrent to President Putin. All the Scandinavian and Baltic countries have been rebooting their own schemes, but Britain is ruling out a return to conscription, which ended 60 years ago. The BBC's Europe correspondent Nick Beek visited a military session and sent this special report from the Estonian-Russian border. OK, Rupert, for now, thank you very much for updating us there from Pwali and plenty more on that story on the BBC News website, of course. Do stay with us here on BBC News. I'll be back in just a few moments with plenty more on all of those top stories.
This is BBC News, the headlines. The fallout from Israel's deadly strike on aid workers. There are calls for Western countries to suspend arms exports and for an independent investigation into the attack. Lord Cameron rules out Western boots on the ground in Ukraine. He tells the BBC allies need to step up or risk the war being lost. NATO countries bordering Russia urge their Western allies to introduce, reintroduce military conscription to deter Vladimir Putin. And a major medical trial begins to learn whether blood tests can spot the early signs of dementia. A special ceremony has been held to mark the 75th anniversary of the NATO alliance. As the war in Ukraine continues, the alliance has agreed to start planning for a greater role in coordinating military aid to the country. Foreign ministers, led by the alliance's Secretary-General Jens Stoltenberg, met today to discuss how they can best support Ukraine in the future. At the ceremony, Jens Stoltenberg said the bloc not only strengthens Europe's security, but also makes North America stronger. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Thousands of people are to be offered a blood test for dementia in a new trial to be run by memory clinics across the UK. The hope is that diagnosing people earlier will mean better support and more effective drug treatments. The five-year project will look for Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. At the moment, about a third of people living with the conditions never get a formal diagnosis. Here's our medical editor, Fergus Walsh. That's it from me for the moment. Do stay with us here on BBC News. I'll be back very shortly with plenty more on all the day's top stories. Thanks for watching. Live from London, this is BBC News. The fallout from Israel's deadly strike on aid workers. There are calls for Western countries to suspend arms exports and for an independent investigation into the attack. Countries bordering Russia urge their NATO allies to reintroduce military conscription to deter Vladimir Putin. While the latest round of Russian drone attacks kills four people in Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv. And a major medical trial begins to learn whether blood tests can spot the early signs of dementia. The race to rescue hundreds of people still missing in Taiwan after a powerful and deadly earthquake rocked the island. Hello, I'm Samantha Simmons. Welcome to BBC News Now. Three hours of fast-moving news, interviews and reaction. Three former Supreme Court judges are among more than 600 legal experts calling for the UK government to end weapons sales to Israel. The 17-page letter cites the conclusion by the International Court of Justice that there is a plausible risk of genocide in Gaza. Hugo Bichega in Jerusalem. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.
The official number of people trapped in collapsed tunnels along Taiwan's eastern coastline has risen considerably, from 100 to almost 650. The island was struck on Wednesday by its strongest earthquake in a quarter of a century. At least nine people were killed and more than a thousand injured when the quake hit the city of Hualien, roughly 100 miles south of the capital, Taipei. Our Asia correspondent Rupert Wingfield hates Hayes reports from Huai Lane. Okay, Danny, thank you. Well, Piran Ditta Khan convicted of murder by a majority of 10 to 1 after 11 jurors deliberated for almost 19 hours over four days. The final suspect in the murder of West Yorkshire police officer Sharon Beshinevsky nearly 20 years ago, convicted in the past few moments at Leeds Crown Court. On BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Piling on the pounds, new charges on EU food coming into the UK. And more money is always good. Rock legend Gene Simmons speaks to the BBC about selling the KISS back catalogue. The best thing about this deal is who we're doing the deal with, about the collaborative nature and about how we've met our newest best friends. Welcome to the programme. I'm Egon Kosu. We start in the UK, where the government has unveiled how much companies will have to pay to import certain food from the EU. Now the country is no longer part of the European Union. Small imports of things like fish, salami and cheese will attract fees of up to £145 from the end of this month. The government says the fees will be used to pay for what it describes as world-class border facilities. Earlier, I spoke to Phil Pluck. He's the boss of the Cold Chain Federation, which represents companies working in the temperature-controlled supply chain. I asked him about the impact on food prices. Let's uh, catch up with some other news now. The world's second biggest chip maker, SK Hynix, says it will invest nearly $4 billion in a facility in the US state of Indiana. Uh, the new plant will include an advanced production line to make the next generation of chips, which will be used to train artificial intelligence machines. Disney has won a boardroom battle against critics who had accused the company of botching its streaming strategy and losing its creative spark. Activist investors, including Nelson Peltz, had sought seats on the company's board of directors, which they said was too close to Disney's leadership. But a majority of shareholders voted to maintain the company's current board. Google is considering charging for new premium features featured by generative artificial intelligence. That's according to the Financial Times newspaper. Such an adjustment to the company's business model could result in some of its core products being placed behind a paywall for the first time and spell the biggest ever shakeup in the tech giant's search business. Airline passengers at major UK airports will continue to face limits on the amount of liquid they can carry in their hand luggage this summer. It comes after a deadline to fully install new scanning technology was extended. The new scanners are expected to produce more detailed images which would allow passengers to pass through airport security with containers holding up to two litres of liquid in their hand luggage. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned. Much more to come. Hello from the BBC Sports Centre, I'm Amory Batson. 
We start with the tennis and the news that the Saudi Arabian capital of Riyadh will host the WTA finals for the next three years and offer record prize money of $15.25 million. And that's all the sport for now. Back to you, Samantha. Thanks very much. Now, uh, breaking news in the past half hour. A man has been found guilty of murdering a police officer by planning the armed robbery in which she was shot dead almost 20 years ago. Piran Ditta Khan, who is 75, spent nearly two decades evading justice for his part in the killing of PC Sharon Beshinevsky in Bradford on the 18th of November 2005. Her colleague PC Theresa Milburn was also shot as the pair responded to a raid at a travel agent's. Khan, who was extradited from Pakistan last year, was the last of seven men involved in the robbery to face trial. He had previously admitted robbery but denied the officer's murder. Danny Savage reports. Planned strikes by London Underground drivers have been called off. The first one was due to have taken place this coming Monday. The Tube Drivers Union Aslef said Tube management had put forward proposals that resolved key issues around training and working arrangements. A second walkout planned for the 4th of May has also been scrapped. That's it for me for the moment. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Matthew and Molly Wallet will be up next. Bye. Hello there. Let's take a look at some of the big weather stories going on across the globe. 